Hi everyone, welcome back to yet another episode of Become a Citizen Developer. And in today's episode, we're going to talk about exception handling. So as we continue our automation journey, we have already completed five episodes. By this time, we are already aware that error plays a very important role in our automation journey. So as we are trying to, or as we are learning to automate our task, it can be frustrating because we keep on encountering errors. But what would actually make us complete our automation and complete a learning journey is not to avoid error, but actually learning that how do we tackle them. So this episode will be concentrated towards the same, that how do we actually understand what has caused this particular error so that we can work towards fixing it and making our automation run smoothly. So first and foremost, how do we handle error? So with Studio X come these two things, validate and analyze, which are actually part of workflow analyzer setting, which we'll quickly see in Studio X. But to give you a glimpse, validate tool will find all the activities with the validation error. So these are usually any incomplete activity. So we would actually see a red icon or you can say a warning sign, which actually tells us that what is being missing in this particular activity. So it is kind of validating that whether this particular thing is complete or not. So that is what validate does. Now coming on to analyze. So there are few best practices that we follow while we are trying to build the automation. So analyze thing or workflow analyzer setting actually checks that whether we are abiding by all those best practices or not. So it actually analyzes a workflow to see if all the recommended best practices are being incorporated in our automation or not. Now, when I say best practices, we would have already seen a lot of best practices while we are you know, progressing towards the episode. But to list down few, the first being, we should start with creating the robot path for our task and make it modular. So when we start with creating the robot path, the advantage that we get is that we kind of have a picture that which particular step has to be performed and at what sequences and how can we break it into logical modules. Then renaming the activities. So as in when we drag any activity, we should rename it because when there are a lot of activities already being used in our process, if we rename it, then it would be easy for us to actually debug it or re reach to that particular activity that has thrown error. Say for example, if you're using 10 type in two in your process, and now if you get an error that, okay, type into has thrown an error. So you would be confused that out of those 10 type into which particular type into has actually thrown the error. But if you actually rename all those activities uh, say like type into first name, type into address, type into state, type into pin code. Now, if the particular, if the executor has thrown error, the type into state has thrown error. So you exactly know that out of those 10 type into which type into you have to debug or you have to look into. Then using project notebook for all the calculations that you do. Though we haven't, you, seen project notebook and it uses in the episode till now, but we'll soon see it. So it's a inbuilt or you can say by default our Excel present with every solution that you create. And it is recommended that for any calculation, you should utilize project notebook. Constantly check for the input data to be correct. So whatever input data you are providing, so you have to constantly check for the input data to be correct. It could be that the logic has nothing to do with it and the input data that you're providing is incorrect, which is actually causing the error. As you build your project, test small parts of it often. So suppose if your bigger sequence has 10 subsequences, build one sequence, test it, then build another sequence, test it, then build third sequence, test it, and then all together, test all the three sequences and then go on building the fourth sequence. So this is you doing unit and integration testing parallelly. Make use of run to this activity to run the project from the start and stop before a specific activity. So as the name suggests, if you use run to this activity, 
So it will begin from the start and come till that particular activity. If you use run from this activity, so it will start from that particular activity and go till end. So run to this activity will start from start to that particular activity and run from this activity would start from here and go till the end. Use annotation for activities. So annotations are like comments that you provide. So that is useful. If suppose I have built the code, code and I've given it to you. So if I have used proper annotation in my code, then it is very easy for you to actually understand what is being done in each sequence. So it gives you more information and better understanding of the code. And for all the activities that have the option of reference as use suggestive naming. So as you would have seen in the previous Excel automation episode, that whenever you use an Excel automation or whenever you actually use an Excel, so you also can refer that particular Excel with a name. So reference is nothing but like a nickname to it. So if you actually give a very meaningful name to it, then it is very easy for you to, you know, build complex logic as well as it is very easy for other people also to understand your code and for you also to debug it. Say now you have built a code, but if you have to debug it, say a month later or say six months later, if you've actually used proper naming convention and useful naming, then it would be easy for you to relate to the things. Now let's just go and look all of this practically. So as I was saying, this is where you see validate and analyze. If you actually click on this drop down button, you will see two options. One is analyze and the other is validate. So as I told you, validate will actually check for incomplete thing. In this particular Excel, you can see there's a red button which says one or more children have validation errors or warning. Similarly, this also says the same. So when it says one or more children have validation error or warning, which means you have to go inside it, which means this particular sequence has nothing to do with it. In fact, this is the sequence that has issue. So now this says target element must be set, which means there's no selector for this and you have to indicate that where it has to select. So now you know that this is where the problem lies. Also, if your this thing is not validated, you cannot run it. If your solution is not validated, you cannot run it. Now, if I try to run it, it will show me error. So it says validation error target element must be set. The other thing is analyze. If I click on analyze, there are certain set of rules. Okay, let me open analyze. Okay, analyze will not open unless I actually clear out all these error that is there. So let's go on clearing it. Let's copy this RPA sample unicorn name because we have to indicate the selector and for that we'll have to open this particular site. Okay. So let's go and quickly indicate it. Indicate target on screen. So it's a drop down. Let me indicate the drop down here. So I've indicated the drop down. So it's searching for target by selector. It has selected the anchor. I'll click on confirm. Okay, so now it's done. Now you can see the error is gone. Now if I open analyze, so it is analyzing the project and it says saved value my unicorn name is used in activity message box, but is created later by activity get text your unicorn name. So now if you actually look closely at the error, it is very clear. What it says is that saved value my unicorn name is used in the activity message box. Okay, so it is used here but the value set here, which means it should be after we have set it, only then we can display it, right? So now if we go and analyze it, no errors found, which means it is fine. It is analyzed, it is validated. But what all it is actually validating is 
For that, we can open workflow analyzer settings and we can see all the rules that it is referring to. You can check and uncheck any rules that you want. You can also select that whether you want the default action to be error, warning, info or verbose. So all, it, all this is up to you. Now, few thing to notice here is you see here a code is given, right? So how this code actually work is, it has three things separated by hyphen. So the first is actually the category. So where you see Excel, it's actually Excel. Where you see zero to seven. So it is a rule, rule number 27. DBP means design best practices. So it's an Excel rule of design best practices, rule number 27. So this is how the naming convention is done. Then from here, you can see what the scope is. Okay. So if it's a project level scope or it's a workflow level scope that you can see. Then if you select any particular thing, so you here in the recommendation, you'll see how to follow the rule. And there's also a documentation link. So once you click on it, you'll reach to the documentation page. So this says what that particular rule is, how you can, you know, up, abide by this rule. So in the recommendation, you see this, then you also have scope, which tells that it's a project level scope or it's a workflow level scope. Then here you have the general settings, project setting wizard. So from here also uh, you can open the workflow analyzer. Okay. And scope and action filter we've already talked about. Now, some of these rules like activity restriction or package restrictions, you see package restriction, activity restriction, app URL restriction. So these are actually managed by your organization. Okay, so these are prohibited and managed by your organization. But all others where empty use Excel activity or incomplete if, incomplete if checks that if it is, if that particular, if that you have used at least have one branch then there are also rules that look at the value used. So if you say for later use and you don't use that value, so it will show you a warning that you're actually have declared a variable that you're not using. Okay. So, and similarly, there's also a rule undefined output properties you can see here. Okay. So this rule checks that whether output properties for certain activities are declared and used or not. So as of now, you can see it is unchecked, which means even if this particular rule is not being followed, it will not throw error. But if you want to follow this rule, you'll have to click on OK, which means then your particular workflow would be following this particular rule. OK, so this is how you actually, you know, um, tackle, see that whether a particular thing is being followed or not. Now, if I would you saw in the beginning that this particular thing was throwing error, right? So we fixed one error. And then when we analyzed, we saw that it is actually using a variable, like it is defining, printing the variable before and assigning it later. So when we analyzed, we got to know about it. Now, if we run it, do you think it's going to run normally? So let's just run and see it. If it would work fine or it would not work fine. So I've already clicked on run. I'm waiting for it to execute. And it actually shows error. It did not run as it is supposed to run. And now that we've got this screen, I would also walk you through how you actually you know, identify what the error is. So now the first thing that you see, it says something went wrong with the application activity type into what is your name field. So this phrase will tell you which activity failed or which activity the robot failed to execute. These first two sentences are going to tell you this. Then you can see that it tells you why it went wrong. Okay, so it says this particular Excel was not found and that is why it went wrong. So the first thing tell you something went wrong and which particular activity went wrong. Then the other sentence would tell you that why it went wrong. So this phrase will give you possible reasons why the execution failed. 
then at last it will tell you where it failed so if you see main use excel file then inside use browser chrome there's a type into activity so it has given you the exact path where it failed then we have retry if you want to retry the same activity you can retry if you want to skip it that okay skip this particular type into and move further then you can move further or otherwise you can stop the execution so i'll stop the execution in my case so it says that uh, no such file is present okay so let's just go and check if such file is present or not so here is the file and i'm going to open it let me give this thing a run to see that now if it throws error because earlier it showed that that particular excel file did not exist at all but this particular time it is actually entering everything getting the name and showing me radiant cloud jumper is the name so this time it worked perfectly fine so now that you've seen that how do you validate your workflow how do you analyze your workflow how you can actually play around the workflow analyzer setting and if in case you get that error screen so you know that that particular error screen contains all the information for you to debug and reach to the root cause, what particular activity has caused the error and why it has caused the error. So that particular thing, that particular pop-up that you get actually contains a lot of information for you to debug and fix the code. So that's all for this particular video. I'll see you in the next episode with another interesting topic. Till then, stay tuned and please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel.